baby, today I got five Canadian dividend stocks for you that recently posted earnings, a lot of which increased their dividends. And these are lesser talked about of the Canadian economy when it comes to dividend stock investing. Now, if you invested in just these five stocks over the last five years, you would have also outperformed the S&P 500. No, not financial advice, but the five stocks we're discussing are going to be Enbridge. We're going to be talking about Ford as some of the utility companies, oil with Suncor. And then we're getting into the railways with Canadian Pacific and Canadian National Railway. If that is a conversation you'd appreciate, hit that like button because in the latter half of this month, guys, we're going to be getting into the Canadian bank earnings. We've got some more real estate investment trust earnings and so much more coming down the wire. So definitely subscribe for those updates, but let's kick it off with Enbridge first and foremost. Now this is probably a dividend investor favorite here in Canada, paying a 6.86% dividend with a 21% increase over the last five years in its stock price. Taking a look at the dividend growth going from 32 cents 10 years ago, a quarter to 89 cents a quarter today, well over doubling of that dividend really nice to see. And if you don't know this company, we talk about it quite a bit here being primarily a pipeline co focused company with liquid pipelines making up 57% of their revenue, but they also got gas transmission, gas distribution and storage. And let's take a look at the breakdown of this because it is astounding, jaw dropping, really impressive. An oil kind of utility focused company is growing this much. Take a look at liquid pipelines year over year went from 7.7 .7 billion to 8.9 billion in revenue. A gas transmission and midstream went from 3.8 to 4.8 four gas distribution and storage was relatively flat sitting around 1.85 billion renewables went from 496 million to 522 million with the adjusted EBITDA going from 14 billion to 15.5 billion oil is truly having a comeback here and these are some pretty impressive numbers their total EPS numbers adjusted went from what two dollars and 74 cents to 281 and take a look at their future expected growth here is going to be around a five percent Geiger adjusted EBITDA will be around eight uh, percent they're still expecting to grow the dividend around 3% coming into, you know, 2023 expectations here. So this is all nice stuff, guys, a really rounded company. It's more of a dividend company than a growth company, obviously, but we're going to see the growth side of Canada when we take a look at the railways. But let's look at Fortis, this utility company, another favorited of the dividend investing community with a 4% starting dividend yield. This one, the dividend 10 years ago was paying 31 cents a quarter to 57 cents in the recent quarters. And that's not as impressive as Enbridge, obviously. But when you look at the long-term chart of Fortis, five years, it's up 31%. But on the max history, this is a company that is a steady eddy dividend increase. You're getting a really healthy 4% yield, and it does outperform the general TSX market, whereas Enbridge stock has relatively been flatlining. It hasn't hit an all-time high since 2015. So you're not getting the same growth, but you are getting that almost 7% yield. So you're kind of sacrificing the yield for some growth with Fortis and, and kind of diversifying their income between transmission, clean energy, and distribution. If you keep your hydro lights on, I've always loved the idea of early day investing me where I thought, hey, if I could just buy enough of the phone company, the telecom provider to pay my phone bill, I'd be happy. If I could just buy enough of a of the utility company to pay my hydro bills, I'd be happy. And that's something you can do with Fortis. Uh, it kind of really breaks down to that fundamental love of dividends. Take a look at the growth here for revenue coming year over year from 2020 making 8.9 billion to 11 billion here, uh, which is pretty astounding. Like these are really impressive, steady eddy kind of growth numbers. And this one's definitely proving to be a lot more resilient with their debt than something like an Algonquin Power and Utility Corp. So hopefully their structure continues to grow like this because again, this has been one of the Canadian dividend beasts that have been really recognized in the community. Now, the lesser talk about industry, you know, oil, gas, it's never been a real favorite of mine, but in the last five years, these things have been having a real comeback. Now, Suncor Energy, we're not getting any growth out of this guy. It's been flat for the last five years with a 4.66% dividend, but that's not what I want you to pay attention to with this company. What I want you to pay attention to is the dividend growth. Now, this comes with some volatility, but you can't help but understand this company was paying 13 cents a quarter 10 years ago to today where they're paying around 52 cents. That is an astounding increase in dividend payments. Now, keep in mind during the pandemic when people stopped driving and oil use fell off a cliff and oil prices went like negative, this was a really bad time for dividend income. They did cut the dividend pretty dramatically, but if you take the long history of this, you can't help but recognize this to be one of the best dividend beasts that Canada pretty much had to offer or currently has to offer as well. This company owns 20% of the Canadian consumer fuel market with 1,585 Petro-Canada retail sites. Whenever you're filling up your tank at Petro-Can or any of these gas stations, you can usually look at the actual like the gas pump and you'll see one of the logos for one of these big oil conglomerates on it. And taking a look at their production of selling, they do a bit of bitumen, SEO, gasoline and diesel and Brent with a 28 year oil sand reserve life 
ranked index and you can kind of take a look at where they're streaming all of this through uh you know uh, the western world here pretty impressive stuff but what's not so impressive is the slowdown oil is very cyclical business we got warren buffett you loading up on the oil companies and i think they're going to be very steady moving forward but the problem is, is oil has been very volatile over the last five years and we're seeing that with q2 numbers being like records for suncor in 2022 that was like you know coming out of the peak of that oil boom because of the geopolitical event and now it's starting to level off a little bit coming into the last quarter of 2022 so i i don't know where oil is going very cyclical business and i'm very surprised that buffett has been taking you know berkshire has been taking such large stakes in the oil industry but let's talk about a very steady eddy the outperformer is some of the best stocks that canada has to offer and well that's got to be the railways and we'll kick it off with canadian pacific railway here these dividends aren't nearly as impressive the other railway pays a much higher dividend but you're talking about a doubling of your money over the last five years and you're talking about a dividend that went from 35 cents 10 years ago to 95 cents uh, which was astounding but then they did a five to one split so it looks like they cut the dividend but they didn't they just did a split and it really doesn't look like they've increased the dividend since they did a share split uh, back here in around I think it was May of 2021 but still what a dividend increase or man a growth you get everything you want everything beautiful with this company this is why you want to balance growth companies out with these high dividend pairs because that growth will make up for the lackluster cap growth you get out of something like Enbridge but the revenue highlights total revenue is up 21 percent you take a look at the diversification here grain uh production i guess this is just what they're shipping was up 42 percent coal was down 13 percent fertilizers and sulfur was up potash you know energy and chemicals down if you take a look at the little pie chart they offer down here you can kind of see what the revenue breakdown looks like in percentages with primarily just being grain uh, a huge percentage of what they're shipping across the country and take a look at the revenue here guys that, that 21 percent growth is nothing to like shy away from it's insane it's insane that these kind of you know industry backbone companies that are dinosaurs at this point or what you think to be a dinosaur can still grow at a 21 percent revenue clip it's pretty astounding so let's take a look at its counterparty canadian national railway not up as nearly as much only up 60 percent in the last five years with a two percent starting dividend taking a look at the actual dividends themselves 10 years ago i'm not sure there's a split here let's look at the 2014 price where they were paying 22 cents a quarter to today where they're paying 70 nine cents my god a tripling of the dividend there is pretty uh, incredible to say the least and this one gives us a little bit better visuals on the layout of their uh, railways but again take a look international uh, petroleum chemicals so they do a lot of oil shipments making up almost 20 percent uh, grain and fertilizers at 16 percent uh, forest products at 12 percent they do some automotive typically chemicals are shipped through railways because it's a lot more protective than shipping them across the highways it, it de-risks some of the the idea of having an accident which we recently saw in the u.s which was what utah or idaho or something where that chemical train had an accident and it was extremely toxic and very problematic that they've been dealing with but take a look at the revenue growth on this guy 22nd consecutive years of dividend growth first and foremost which is just astounding they did increase the dividend again coming into 2023 to three dollars and 16 cents i think on an annual basis which is pretty incredible and from that revenue standpoint guys i mean take a look at this 2018 doing 14.3 billion to 17 billion in 2022 not nearly as fast of growth as we're seeing with canadian pacific railway but these two combined stocks if you were holding them together they do trade at pretty hefty premiums today but you, uh, i can't get over the growth rates on some of these companies so these five canadian dividend stocks have been real outliers in performance over the last five years for not only dividend income but growth and again if you combine all of these together in a single portfolio of just these five stocks you would have done so well i mean your average dividend yield would be way higher than the average market and on top of that the growth from the canadian railways you know matched with those dividends would have just been astounding but i'll pass the question off to you at this point i'd love to know what you think about these canadian dividend stocks